The opinions expressed in the following programs are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers nor Rogers TV. here at the food bank greenhouse and you're about ready to meet somebody pretty special someone the community has really come to love so here we are with Luis Reyes now Luis works at the food bank here and is our chief agronomist in fact you're our only agronomist Luis <laughs> uh, but I did want to talk a bit here well about uh, the green walls which is what you're standing in front of here we've got some there got some over there so can you just tell me how these work hi Glenn. Uh, of course uh, this kind of uh, pocket wall is what you really is the same as the one that you use to put your uh, remote control or your shoes next to your door yeah. but this is made of felt mm -hmm. so it's super breathable and it's super uh, allow the, the water to flow through it so what we do is to fill these pockets with a little bit of soil or a little bit of uh, clay pebbles and we do our growing here. The thing is like with one of these walls you use the same space that you use for 10 or 20 plants but you have a hundred plants in the yeah. same space really That's because good. you go vertical. So when this uh, program airs uh, on Rogers TV, we'll be right in the middle of the food drive, the Curb Hunger food drive. And uh, what the food bank is doing is that we're giving out a number of these free of charge to people uh, so they can grow in their own backyards or put inside of their garage or fence or whatever. Um, but we're asking that if they do that, that they, uh, the food that they grow, they give towards local uh, depots to help uh, food insecure families or bring it to the food bank. But you're going to have to teach people how to use all that when they come in. Luis, but these are remarkable things. I mean, I only learned about them myself a short while ago, but they have huge output and, and they're really great because they're felt, right? They retain the water and everything. That's really good. Yeah. That's great. Luis, that was a great bit of surprise I had there the other day coming into the greenhouse and seeing you there back with the green walls. The green walls are so fascinating to me because I didn't know anything about them and uh, they have so much potential. And I came away from that thinking, that's just the way it was with you. I didn't know anything about you you until I met you there that one day before the greenhouse was even built and um, but I just saw so much potential in you and you've done so much for us can you just talk to us a bit you've become kind of something of a community treasure to a lot of people because you know so much about greenhouses and that's something we don't have a lot of here in London there are some but not too many so how did you get started in greenhouses is it back in Chile I take it was it Yes, it was back in Chile uh, where we trained with my partner as uh, agronomists, both of us. 
And actually, my first job for uh, going out of college, I work in a nursery for um, blueberries. Blueberry. That was a big operation of blueberries in Chile. Uh, probably, I'm going to say, 20 acres, so 10 hectares or something like that, under plastic. So just to go from one side of the greenhouse to the other one side of the greenhouse, it takes the whole day. So it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a thing. So that's um, pretty much 20 years ago. Next thing that we did after uh, that was uh, working in our organic uh, uh, program for helping patients in Chile. So, and, and, and in that one, we had to design another greenhouse. Like it was in a slope of a, of, of a mountain. So it, it was the land that is most accessible to Besson. So it's the cheapest land in the mountain. But to build a greenhouse in that condition is, is something else. And after that, we moved to Newfoundland, Newfoundland. to work in greenhouse there. So yeah. there we spent another five or seven years working in greenhouses there uh, when we finally moved to, to London. Yeah. And that was probably three, four years ago. And I was looking for uh, work myself into urban agriculture. It was something that it was uh, dear to me and I want to explore. So I reached out to pretty much all of the uh, uh, institutions in, in London. There, there are a few that are working in urban agriculture, in, uh, in nature projects and, and, and stuff like that. And that's how I realized that the food bank was doing this project about the greenhouse. And in my experience, uh, I, I have seen other greenhouse projects that, or community gardens, or, or, or other uh, agriculture projects, community driven, that don't really, really work because don't have a, a, a strong support of the of, of, of the community, really, of, of the uh, local officials. And as soon as you go into a, a, a roadblock from the perspective of having like a, a permit that you need. And that permit is going to take so much effort to put into, like the community really disband. And I, I was aware of, I, I was a, a little bit preoccupied like something like that could happen with the, with the food bank project. And that's when I meet you and John Fleming, and I saw how uh, advanced were your project in, in that moment, like two years ago. And I said like, this is a super nice greenhouse, but uh, do, uh, I, I, and I ask you like, do you know what it takes to run a greenhouse like that? And that's when I, I, we have that conversation of what, what really means to run a greenhouse uh, in the city. And I, I realized like you needed the help. Yeah, what was funny about that was John Fleming had been the head of planning for the city of London, and he knew that I was trying to get this greenhouse thing going. Uh, so, but I remember Luis, you know, uh, Leuna, the the construction trade union, they came in, they helped us put up the steel girders for it, and there were other companies that graded the ground. This was all volunteer, all these people that did it. But I remember then you and John and I came out on a Saturday, and we had to put the two plastic coverings over the greenhouse, and it was. A really windy day and I'll always remember being up on top of the thing and the thing had flipped over and but it was you and your experience that helped us to get it all put together that day but since then which was two years ago that greenhouse is the, the one that you're in right now has just thrived um, so Luis now that you've got the plants and everything all up and growing can you tell us exactly what you grow in there it's obviously it's food that food bank clients would, would look for but what do you grow um, so, so, so to, to, to make the better use of the greenhouse, we decided to have a, a, a super diverse greenhouse. So it is the, the best thing to, to in the point of production, like if, if you want to produce uh, the most amount of yield, you go for one species of plant and you optimize all the conditions for one species of plant. Yeah. Right here at the football, we have, I'm going to say 10 different varieties of tomato. 10 mm -hmm. different varieties of leafy greens, more than 10 different uh, herbs running right now. And we do even grow uh, uh, roots like beets and uh, uh, radishes. And we're growing, uh, we did have last week uh, a nice uh, crop of uh, carrots. Mm -hmm. Small carrots like growing inside the greenhouse, you just taste it out of the, the ground and they are going to the to, to the client in the front, like probably in the same day. And that's uh, at a, a, so sweet when we taste it like this because it's just harvest. That is something uh, of, of a next level product. 
Yeah. So other than that, in the in this uh, a greenhouse, we also do production of uh, strawberries. Uh, well, uh, the tomatoes, the eggplants. Um, so it, it's a variety. I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something else. Like we do some specialty stuff, like uh, uh, the uh, porcelain, um, the, the Malabar spinach, the, some of the Asian variety of prints that the, the names are hard to pronounce. Yeah. So right now here, easily 50 different varieties of different uh, stuff growing all year long. Yeah. Yeah. It's a heated greenhouse. And I was there with you when you put those special lights in there and everything. And they kind of trick the plants into thinking that it's OK to grow at this particular time. Uh, so it's, it's been fascinating to watch how you do it. And Luis, I know that you also have helped other groups in the city as well since you started at the food bank. Um, you know, a, a number of them who are looking at perhaps growing uh, agencies and others or there's groups like, uh, you know, growing chefs and others uh, who have been partnering with you to help it in the schools so on and so forth but so this greenhouse just isn't about people coming in and volunteering and helping out you've actually taken the knowledge which is actually I think the main thing that's in that greenhouse right now is your knowledge because it's so vast about these things but you've taken that out into the community and helped them to do better in the last year though it was a year ago we started giving out free greenhouses do you remember that to churches there were many churches that during the pandemic because they had a good volunteer base and because they owned the land um, they wondered uh, you know could they have greenhouses and they, they would grow that food and then the food that they grew there on site at the various churches so there was 20 of them or so uh, they grew the food there and then they took them to depots food bank depots in their area or they would bring the food to the food bank but I know for a lot of them Luis they had never done anything like this before and they really had to come to you and and seek your help How how hard was it for you to help get them up and running? Um, it, 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 it's not that hard, Glenn. You know, uh, there is uh, community gardeners around everywhere in the city. Yeah. But uh, to present the, uh, a, a greenhouse is another game. Like uh, to grow outside in your garden is one thing, and to do this. Uh, 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 Force production in the greenhouse that you can start earlier and you can finish later in the season, uh, and and to teach how to be correctly ventilate it, irrigate it, and to e even you know what to put the plants into your co containers in your pots. All of that is some some stuff that they are not used to really. Like yeah. we're used to open the ground to put more compost, uh, and I, my background is in uh, nursery production, so. For me, doing the, the container gardening really is my, my strong suit. And uh, I can see that uh, uh, knowledge being delivered to, to these other partners that we are going, that we are working right now. And um, I must say that I, it feels super nice to be uh, appreciated like that in, in yeah. your own field. Yeah. And Luis, you just became something special a couple of weeks ago. What was that? We were also happy and proud of you and your family. What happened there? So uh, a couple of weeks ago was the ceremony of my citizenship, uh -huh. of Canadian citizenship. Yeah. And today in the morning, like at eight in the morning, like the first thing that I do, I open my mail and I saw the, the certificate. Yeah. So now I can travel around the world and come back to Canada without any problem. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little late, late for the voting stuff. Like one day before it will be perfectly, but... Yeah. That, that's okay. We, we will go for the next one. Yeah. No. So now to become uh, a Canadian in, in the whole right, um, uh, and you see the whole history of, of Canada and how uh, the, 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 the whole uh, government system really uh, put forward this uh, idea of volunteering as a part of making community glue and, and community together. Uh, for me, it takes another uh, level of uh, yeah. seriousness. Yeah. Now that I'm part of this team, Team Canada, uh, it really takes another meaning. Yeah, and it gives meaning to us as well, Luis, because, I mean, you, you've come to us and you've helped the food bank to get to another level. I remember when I first announced, it was in a media interview, that we were going to have a greenhouse. 
I had no idea what I was talking about. I just knew that the public was wanting us to do more in the area of fresh food, and I thought this would be a good way to go. Um, but if anybody would have asked me at that time, well, how do you do that? I, I wouldn't have known. It was you that came along and helped all of us learn how to not just to put up a greenhouse, but also how to operate it year-round and also to help uh, the, the other greenhouses around the city as well. I think somebody would be surprised if they came to the food bank at the moment, they would look in the back of the food bank and they would see all of these gardens that we have, these raised beds and, and stuff. And then beside that is the greenhouse, which is primarily your job, right? And if you could look at it from up above, you would see that it's, it's roughly the same size as the food bank itself, the building. You know, we put so much commitment towards the fresh food thing. And now 55% of the food that the food bank gives out is fresh. You know, that's an amazing thing. You have helped us to get to that total, uh, Luis, but it's obviously the way of the future. And I um, I hope you know that you're now a full-time employee at the food bank, which I think is awesome. You're a real brain trust for us. But I, I hope you really see for yourself, you have a real future in this for yourself, Luis, because a lot of us have a lot to learn about greenhouses, how they work in a winter climate, those kind of things. And, and I hope you find meaning in that for yourself. This is an opportunity that immense turns to me really like uh, uh, be, because it's, it's the easiest thing for me would be really to go to this big greenhouse there in uh, Hamilton or around the area really and start working again in the same thing that I already did. But like I said, I was looking for an opportunity to do it in the in the urban uh, 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 agricultural world because I can see something there to to that I, that I have enough to 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 really make an. Uh, an uh, a, a change in, in what we're seeing and with my background, I think it's going to happen. Yeah, uh, and it's going to happen for the food bank too. Thank you, Luis. You've just been one of the main things that's happened to us and we're really thankful for you and you become a real community treasure. We look forward to working you over the coming years. Thanks, Luis. Thank you for the opportunity again. Have a good one. Yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m., it's the RTV Quiz. Giovanni Petiti hosts a weekly trivia competition that lets you play from the comfort of your couch. Play along at home and challenge your friends. And don't forget to follow along on social media. Let us know who's top of trivia, and you can find yourself featured on a future episode. Are you kidding me, folks? The RTV Quiz, Wednesday nights at 7.30 p.m. on Rogers TV or at rogerstv.com slash rtvquiz. to the corner and Kingston with some pressure here off a helmet and Mete has a lane he has speed look at him go here's Mete with that speed in a long shoot scores coast to coast Victor Mete seven on the air well Victor Mete picks up this loose puck in his own zone and all of a sudden he's away to the races he's got a clear lane as the defenders were wide apart on the play you can see that Helvig bit on the forehand backhand move he puts it back onto the forehand goes straight upstairs to record the fifth goal in this period here's 
has a chance for Domi. Oh, what a play! Domi shoots! He scores! Well, Taylor Dupuy takes the gamble as he comes out against Max Domi. He loses the race, and Domi just flips that puck up into the air, and you can see by that wide grin on his face, he was pretty happy that Dupuy came out and challenged him. Chitrin can't get back. And that's one that's going to be on a lot of highlight reels tonight. A lot of skill in that. Taylor Dupuy took the chance. Max Domi made him pay. That most recent attempt to get out. He does this time and gets out into the Major zone, leaves it for Kane into the slot. Kane going for two, makes a nice big score! What a dandy goal by Patrick Kane, his second of the game, and he brings the Knights to a 3-0 lead. Patrick Kane scores his second goal of the game in less than two minutes as he pulls off a highlight reel goal here as he comes right down Broadway through the slot area as he takes a nice little feed here from Sam Gagne as he draws two checkers into him. Kane beats one, two, and then he walks around Savage. Follows up on the, the eerie blue line. Here comes Cadre looking for Tavares. Shoots! He John Tavares takes a beautiful feed here from Nazem Kadri. He gets that off his stick awfully quick to record his 50th goal of the season to give the London Knights a 2-1 victory in overtime over the Erie Otters as Kadri waits, waits, and waits. And John Tavares wastes no time getting that off his stick and up over Yanis as the team gets down in honor of breast cancer tonight they wear the pink jerseys and john Tavares scores 259 into the overtime period to give the knights a victory herps and behind his own net 55 remaining in the ottawa penalty look at this Marner upstairs another pk goal Skill. This is skill right here. Liam Herbs panics a bit as he gets rid of this puck. Mitch Marner ends up with it as Christian Dvorak kicks that puck over to him and then through the legs and backhand up over the shoulder as Mitch Marner, the second night to record 20 goals on the season. That's his second shorthanded goal. He had three power play goals last night. From Moore, picked off by uh, Militic, and now we got a one on one with Thomas looking behind him. Thomas trying to go post to Goose. He goes in and out. Oh, baby! What a goal! Highlight real goal by Thomas. What an afternoon for Robert Thomas. He's killing a penalty here. He's one on one with Henderson, and he does a little razzle dazzle there between the legs, gets a better angle on Forrest on the play as he puts it in between the legs. This is his fifth point of the afternoon. He goes off the post and in. That's his 11th goal of the campaign. His fifth point of the afternoon. Uh, let's have a look at the ninth shorthanded goal that the London Knights have scored this season as Robert Thomas is away one on one with Henderson here as he goes in between the legs. That reminds me of Sam Gagne back in 2006 against the Sudbury Wolves. Get a chance turning around, his shot goes wide. Jonathan Diversa follows up on the play as the defenseman. He'll skate back to the bench in a line change. No, he circles back and stays on the ice. Almost too many men on the ice there for the Wolves. Sam 
Gagne with his full skill in effect here. That's Jonathan DeBerza that calls for that move as Gagne puts it between the legs. Kevin Beach goes to poke check Gagne on the play. This is just a highlight reel goal. We'll see this the rest of the week as Gagne fools Beach. He puts it up over top of him to stake the London Knights to a 2-1 lead. My daughter is seven years old and has a frenemy. They have play dates that always end up in a fight or tears. This friend bosses her around and treats her poorly, but she still wants to be her friend. What's a parent to do? I would let them acquiesce to a certain amount. And then, you know, when they're at this age, you still need to be supervising their play dates. So I might step in, not to correct the bossy child, but it's my child that I'm concerned about. I would just expose her to other people, teach her to have a voice, and yeah. let her know that she's got options. You're watching Rogers TV. Do you have something to share? Let everyone know about your next meeting, your need for volunteers, or your fundraising event on the Rogers TV community billboard. Send us your words and we'll bring them to life on Rogers TV and RogersTV.com. When it's time to spread the word, go to RogersTV.com to add your announcement to the community billboard. My name's Ranger M, and I work at Catfish Creek Conservation Authority. I'm the community outreach technician, and that means I do a lot of this. Chatting about all things nature and conservation with kids, adults, teachers, everyone. I love to knowledge share, and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. The world's most famous Canadian, Grey Owl, just back from a triumphant British tour, is to be a reluctant guest at a gathering of First Nations. Archie, you may not realize this, but right now you are the most famous Red Indian in the world. These are your people. You have to be there. Come on, Harold. Let's go. Sure, Adam. Sure. His name is Archie Bellini, and if he's a Red Indian, I'm the king of China. It is an honor to meet the man called Grey Owl, who has brought much respect for our people. Imposter, rascal, dreamer, <laughs> and yet the Englishman who called himself Grey Owl <laughs> awoke the whole world to our vanishing wilderness. My brother says, men become what they dream. You have dreamed well. Hi, I'm Dan Mailer. I'm the host of London Lights, the show where we talk about notable Londoners who have made a big mark, a big impact on the world of music, entertainment, sports, politics. Today, our guest is Jonathan Hollow, Yuri Poole of the McCartney years, the one and only Jim Chapman, Peter Brennan of Jeans and Classics fame. London Lights, Thursday at 8.30. One in three fatalities on our waterways is caused by impaired boating. Don't boat impaired. You're watching Rogers TV.
folks, welcome to the RTV Quiz Show, the hottest show on television. I'm Giovanni Petiti, the most famous guy you've never heard of before. Hosting an incredible TV show for valuable non-existent prizes. This is the show TV Guide Weekly is calling a show that's almost better than nothing at all. All right, this is episode 103 of this juggernaut that is our TV quiz show. And we have a very special categories for you today. This is the mash up edition. We're going to mash up our favorite categories together. Now, for you kids that, you know, sat at the other lunch table in high school and don't know what a mashup is, it's like when two songs you really like get put together, like uh, a song that goes, do, 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 gets, gets put together with that other song you like, it goes, do, 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 do. and then it, the, the DJ mixes so it sounds totally different. It sounds like this. Do, 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 do. Coincidentally, that's a song that's played in every Honda Civic that's parked beside you at a stoplight. That's, hey, buddy, that's my favorite song. Turn it up, turn it up. All right, round one. The category is entertainment history. So we combined entertainment and history like that. You see, how, that's what I'm talking about. All right, question number one. What 1928 movie featuring Mickey Mouse was one of the first cartoons to use synchronized sound. A few clues in there, Mickey Mouse, Disneyland. Fun fact, folks, uh, Disneyland has recently been recognized as the world's biggest people trap designed by a mouse. That's it's architecturally significant. Question number two, which duo won the first Grammy for best rap performance for their song Parents just don't understand. Not to be confused with the version I grew up with, which was called Parents Just Don't Understand English, which, which came in handy during parent teacher interviews. I, but it has its advantages. No, ma, nah, that's just how they pronounce genius in English. Question number three, what popular TV series ran from 1951 to 1957 and was the first to be shot on 35 millimeter film in front of a studio audience? I thought it was Abraham Lincoln that was the first guy to be shot in front of a live studio audience. No, too soon, too soon. Too soon. Question number four, what was the first movie to be rated PG-13 by the Motion Pictures Association of America? Also known by the short form, the Fun Police. Was it A, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom? B, Gremlins? C, Night of the Living Dead? Or D, Red Dawn? Question number five. What was the name of the play being performed at Ford's Theater when Lincoln was assassinated? Yeah, you never hear about that, you know? Like, I feel bad for the actors. It's like, yeah, 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 other than that, like, what do you think of the show? No, too soon, still too soon, still too soon, still too soon. And time for round two, the category is sports science. Question number six, hockey pucks are made of rubber, which is hardened through a process known as what? The goalie's face. Question number seven, the clothing in the shape of the helmet worn by cyclists help cuts wind resistance, making them more of what 11 letter term? Fancy, fancy word for. Course number eight, what organic compound C3H6O3 increases in concentration in your bloodstream during exercise? Is it A, menthol alcohol, B, glycerol, C, lactic acid, or D, carbon dioxide. 
Folks, I know this uh, because I exercise regularly. Uh, today is actually my leg day, which I will be doing uh, diddly squats. And if you don't believe me, you can come down and check out my butt, which is currently in the fitness protection program. Question nine, what are the muscles responsible for swinging your femur forward while kicking a soccer ball collectively known as? Individually, they're known as the iliaculus, the poes, and the pertenius. I'm not a doctor, all right? What do you want from me? Because despite what it says on my Tinder profile, I am not a doctor. Question number 10. What application of statistical analysis to baseball records is used to evaluate and compare the performance of individual players. The term was coined by Bill James. Translation, because baseball is so boring, they need things to fill up the time so they make up stupid stats. It's all in the wrist. All right, time for round one. Answers, the category was entertainment history. Question number one was, what 1920 movie featuring Mickey Mouse was the first cartoon to use synchronized sound? The answer is Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. Question number two, which duo won the first Grammy for best rap performance for their song, Parents Just Don't Understand? That was DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. No idea why they broke up. Probably just too much talent. Uh, <clears throat> in one group. Question number three, what popular TV series ran from 1951 to 1957 and was the first to be shot on 35 millimeter film in front of a studio audience? That was I Love Lucy. Fun fact, folks, I, uh, my pet name for my wife is Lucy. Uh, she thinks it's cute, but uh, she doesn't know it's short for Lucifer. Secret fun fact. Question number four was, what was the first movie to be rated PG-13 by the Motion Pictures Association of America? That was Red Dawn, Red Dawn. Question number five, what was the name of the play being performed at the Ford's Theater when Lincoln was assassinated? It was called Our American Cousin. Speaking of Lincoln, folks, fun facts, fun fact alert here. Uh, the Lincoln Tunnel is a 1.5 mile long tunnel that goes under the Hudson River, connecting New Jersey with Midtown Manhattan. Oh, and the cost of using the tunnel is $16.75 American and is payable at the John Wilkes toll booth. John Wilkes toll booth, he's the guy who shot Lincoln, allegedly. He might lawyer up, so allegedly. Question number six, hockey pucks are made of rubber, which is hardened through a process known as what? Vulcanization. Vulcanization. Uh, it's true, folks. If you look at a hockey puck really closely, you can spock it. Question number seven, the clothing and the shape of the helmet worn by cyclists help cuts down wind resistance, making them more what? Aerodynamic. Question number eight, what organic compound increases in concentration in your bloodstream during exercise? That's C, lactic acid. Lactic acid. Question number nine, what are the muscles responsible for swinging your femur forward while kicking a soccer ball? Those are your hip flexors. Hip flexors. Question number 10, what application of statistical analysis to baseball records is used to evaluate and compare performances of individual players? That's called sabermetrics. Oh, uh, speaking of baseball statistics, folks, uh, fun fact here. If I had a uh, dollar for uh, every boring baseball statistics I heard during a baseball game, I would average approximately uh, $17.39.25 per game 
plus or minus standard deviation of 0.7358 cents uh, on odd numbered days with left handed batters. Don't go away, folks. More TV quiz show after this. Your satisfaction guarantee 8.972% of the time, 100%. Got it, got it. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mario Elia, and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and we'll see you then. Matt Chalmers, I'm a VTR op and master control technical director at TSM. I decided to volunteer at Rogers because I was interested in TV as a profession and it seemed like an awesome way to learn and get out and actually experience what the TV world was like. So I got to do uh, did the hockey, baseball, football, and it helped me build relationships and um, understanding people better and being able to work with different personalities a lot easier. If you want to volunteer um, and you think it looks like a fun thing, do it. Just know that you're going to have to put in a lot of work. And um, but that work is very worth it. And it's a very fun time. John's graduation. We were so proud. We all got together for a picnic. That's when we heard coming from the radio. So we stopped and we listened. It helped us get to safety. That's why when I think of I think of John. Because now he has a real future to look forward to. Welcome back to the RTV Quiz Show. This is our special mashup edition where we mash up your favorite categories into something incredibly new. Round three, the category is geographical art. So we did that. We matched geography and art. So two useless degrees come together to become completely useless. All right, here we go. Question 11, Cafe Terrence at Night by Vincent Van Gogh depicts a real location of a town called Arlenz. What country is it in? Fun fact, speaking of Vincent Van Gogh, folks, uh, apparently Vincent Van Gogh comes from a long line of famous uh, Van Goghs. Um, he had here an obnoxious brother called Please Go. He had another brother who ate a lot of prunes uh, called Gotta Go, a very dizzy aunt called Vertigo, another famous brother who was a life coach called way to go and last but not least a uh, a distant uh cousin from italy who was in the witness protection program called uh where did he go question number 12 what provincial park was frequently represented in the work of canadian artist tom thompson he worked as a guide at the same park famous canadian artist it's not Justin Bieber. Question 13, animal skulls and the landscape of what US state were the subject of numerous paintings by Georgia O'Keeffe? Was it A, New Mexico, B, Indiana, C, Texas, or D, California? Judging by the look of this painting, I would say she did this in the state of confusion. It's like she had a deadline in university. I just do the skeleton. I tell him it's art. Question 14. The alternative title of this painting is Napoleon at the St. Bernard Pass. It depicts Napoleon crossing what high European mountain range? It's a trick question, folks, because Napoleon was so short that everything looked high to him. So... Keep that in mind when you answer this question. Question 15, 
What mountain is depicted in the background of the famous woodblock print, the Great Wave of Kanawaga? Doing the wave. Right, it's half around four. The category is leisure literature. So we mix the categories of leisure and literature to make a new category, which makes no sense. All right, question 16. In his downtime, Sherlock Holmes played a Stradivarius, which is a type of what? Oh, we have a fun fact written in by a young viewer. All right, we have uh, Molly Stapleton of Kitchener, Ontario writes in, uh, why is Sherlock Holmes good at doing taxes? Because he's the master of deduction. <laughs> Eight-year-old father is an accountant. So... <laughs> If you're being held hostage, Molly, just blink twice. Question 17. What Ernest Klein novel features worldwide virtual reality game called Oasis? It's a novel about a reality game. That's the mashup. Question 18. In the Joy Luck Club, Members of the club play what Chinese tile game? Oh, uh, speaking of China, folks, fun fact, fun fact. Uh, the Canadian government is uh, prepared to spend $62.7 million on a uh, fact-finding mission to China to help improve trade relations. Uh, apparently, the uh, focus of the mission will be to visit Chinese dollar stores to find out if everything in there is made in Canada. Question 19, in Alice Adventures in Wonderland, what game is played with flamingos as mallets and hedgehogs as balls? I had a lot of jokes for that, but I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole. I'm not going to, not doing it, not doing it. Question number 20, what best-selling philosophy book by Robert Persing features a 17-day trip from Minnesota to California? Oh, uh, that's, that's easy. I think that book was called To Hell and Back. No? Could be, though. You been in Minnesota? All right, time for round three. Answers, geographical art was a category. Here are the visual clues. Question 11, Cafe Terrence at Night by Vincent Van Gogh depicts a real location in a town car called Argels. What country is it in? That's France. That's, I don't think that picture is finished yet. It, it needs a couple more uh, rude people. Question number seven, what provincial park was frequently represented in the works of Canadian artist Tom Thompson. That park is Algonquin Park. Algonquin Park. Uh, fun fact here, folks. The group, uh, Tom Thompson was part of the famous uh, artist group known as the Group of Seven. It says here, although they all got along, they were sometimes very competitive and would have competitions to see who was the best artist. Uh, a last report, all the competitions ended in a draw. Question 13, animal skulls and landscapes of what U.S. state were the subject of numerous paintings by Georgia O'Keeffe? That state was New Mexico. New Mexico. Question 14, the alternative title of this painting is Napoleon at the St. Bernard's Pass. It depicts Napoleon's crossing what high European mountain range? The answer is the Alps. The Alps. All right, question 15. What mountain is depicted in the background of the famous woodblock print, The Great Wave Off of Kanawaga? That's Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji. I will also accept Tasty Waves by Jeff Spicoli. Some people got that. 
Tasty Waves by Jeff Spacore. Who ordered the pizza? Question 16 was, in his downtime, Sherlock Holmes played a Stradivarius, which is a type of what? A violin, folks, a violin. Question 17, what Ernest Klein novel features worldwide virtual reality game called The Oasis? That was Ready Player One. Ready Player One. Question 18, in the Joy Luck Club, members of the club play what Chinese tile game? That's ma Mahjong, Mahjong. Question 19, in Alice Adventures in Wonderland, what game is played with flamingos as mallets and hedgehogs as balls? That's croquette, croquette. And which makes sense because <clears throat> flamingos and hedgehogs are probably the most useless animals in the animal kingdom. I mean, even more useless than squirrels, you know, which are in nature's speed bumps. Question number 20, what best-selling philosophy book by Robert Persing features a 17-day trip from Minnesota to California? That was called Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Which reminds me, folks, I want to make a big announcement that I am writing a book about reverse psychology. So whatever you do, don't buy it. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back right after this. Unless you read my book. In that case, don't come back. Come back. It's closing time, and you stayed out longer than you planned. So now you can't drive and the buses have stopped running. You could always call your girlfriend. Or maybe your roommate. What about your best friend? You could just dial one taxi guy or use the Taxi Guy app. The call and the app are free, and they both connect you to a local cab company to bring you home safely. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive, drive sober. host of Batter Up Beachville on Rogers TV. Join myself and Doug Harris as we learn more about the first recorded baseball game in Beachville. Watch it on Rogers Cable, rogerstv.com. Thanks for watching. Rogers TV has given me the opportunity to be involved within my local community where I have met plenty of new people, experienced new things. I have done various production roles such as graphics, live audio, and camera work. Recently, I have been a part of the London Knights Rogers TV crew, and I have had a wonderful time there being part of such an amazing and diverse group of individuals. I highly recommend it. Most people that are uh, have received treatment for drug use problems are probably going to have a lapse. Join addictions counselor Dean Anderson for Invisible, breaking through the stigma of addiction on Rogers TV. Hi, I'm Dan Mailer. I'm the host of London Lights, the show where we talk about notable Londoners who have made a big mark, big impact on the world of music, entertainment, sports, politics. Welcome back, folks, to round five of the RTV Quiz Show, the special mash up edition. All right, double, double, double point answers. Why is it double point answers? Because I get to ring the bell twice, and that's what I like to do. The category here is nature, food, and drink. It's a triple mashup. Question 21 A cocktail made of grapefruit juice and gin is known by what canine name? Folks, I don't use gin to make this. I use vodka. So I don't know the fancy pants people out there. But it's often made with grapefruit juice and vodka. Question 22. What fruit sounds like a crustacean and is much smaller and more tart than its common relative, Malus domestica? That's Latin. I don't know why we name things a lot. It makes stupid people feel smart. I don't know. Ignoramus extraordinarius. 
Question 23. What animal is featured on the label of Miller Genuine Draft? Miller Genuine Draft, very uh, popular beer. You can uh, get Miller Genuine Draft on tap almost anywhere, uh, like uh, your kitchen sink. Water. Tastes like, tastes like water. Question 24. What chocolate mint flavored dessert is named after a stridulating insect? Hello? Question 25. Hot cheese served over toast bread is sometimes known by what cunicular name? You. Poutine. All right, time for round five. Answers, all right, the category, nature, food, and drink. Here we go, question 21. A cocktail made of grapefruit juice and gin is known by what canine name? That's a greyhound. Oh, speaking of alcohol, folks, I got a not-so-fun fact here. Uh, according to the researchers, uh, increased consumption of alcohol uh, can affect short-term memory loss. Wow. If that's true, uh, can you imagine what alcohol does? Question number 22. What fruit sounds like a crustacean and is much smaller and more tart than the common relative Malus domestica? That's a crab apple. Malus domestica is Latin for domesticated apple, as opposed to those wild apples that belong to the streets. You belong to the city. You belong to the night. Question 23. What animal is featured in the label of Miller Genuine Draft? That's a bald eagle. Bald eagle. Which... Question 24. What chocolate mint flavored dessert is named after a stridulating insect? That's a grasshopper pie. Question 25. Hot cheese sauce served over toasted bread is sometimes known by what cunicular name? That's a Welsh rabbit welsh rabbit which is exactly like a normal rabbit except when it speaks no one can understand it folks that's all the time we have for the rtv quiz show for this week remember till next time stay safe stay calm and stay nice call the rogers tv viewer response line email us or connect with us on social media Everybody, Tyler Fines, host of Off the Puck Hockey on Rogers Channel 20. We interview some of the biggest names in hockey and sports. Check us out, Rogers Channel 20, Off the Puck Hockey. Let's go. Are you a woman experiencing abuse? Do you know a woman experiencing abuse? Help is available any time of day or night. Sheltersafe.ca is an online map that helps you find a women's shelter or transition house that meets your needs so you can live a life free from violence. Sheltersafe.ca. Help is just a click away. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered with MLB Extra Innings, 